Welcome back to The Megyn Kelly Show. Joining me now is Nikki Neely, the president and founder of Parents Defending Education. And if you haven't checked out this group online, you need to. They're on the side of the good guys. Her organization obtained emails from members of the National School Board Association. You remember, this is the group that wrote to the White House saying, parents, they are domestic terrorists. Help us. And sure enough, the FBI got involved. Um, Well, her organization got emails from them that revealed the National School Boards Association had been working with the Biden White House before that group would wind up submitting its letter and setting off what's become a national firestorm. Uh, Ultimately, this led to Attorney General Merrick Garland enlisting the help of the FBI to monitor parents' activities at school board meetings, or at least to threaten that they're going to go after parents they deemed um, inappropriate in some way. Uh, Once again, Nikki, great to see you. Once again, very questionable about whether the DOJ has any jurisdiction here whatsoever to go after parents in this way or to to try to criminalize, quote, threats that aren't inciting immediate lawless action. Um, You know, just going to your school board saying, you know, if you continue this, I'll show up here every day. Uh, You know, not getting out of the room when they tell them to. This is sort of what the the school board association was listing. Like we told them to leave and they wouldn't. They they had masks on or they they wouldn't put masks on. And we objected. Okay. anyway, um, so let's start with. So you get the idea to FOIA the group, the school board association. And what did you find? Right. So NSBA is actually a private entity. We didn't FOIA them. I FOIA'd every single board member on their personal district email accounts. So those are all public. Those are all publicly accessible. Um, And so I reached out to all 24 members of their board, their ex officio members, um, and those are still coming in. But yeah, from that, we got a correspondence that was sent by Chip Slavin, who is the executive director of NSBA, um, informing everybody on September 29th, um, after the letter was sent, just a heads up, guys, this is what's going on. Um, And he notes that in talks over the last several weeks with White House staff, They requested additional information on some of the specific threats. And so this started to smell a lot like there was a pretext and that, you know, if the White House is requesting specific information that, you know, the cake was already baked. Um, You know, the fact that the uh, Department of Justice turned around five days later, I mean, the Department of Justice moves at the speed of molasses. And so there is just a lot of this that smells very, very bad. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to give myself credit. (laughs) I'm giving myself credit. Um, This is soundbite number eight, because when this broke, here's what I said. There's a reason there's that expression. Well, I'm not going to make a federal case out of it because yeah, that's an exactly. elevation. <laughs> that's an elevation. And normally the DOJ would absolutely laugh at this kind of a thing. And the fact that they're taking it on makes me wonder how it was orchestrated in the first place. Did the DOJ request a letter like this? Right. Did they, Were they just the innocent recipients or did they orchestrate the Biden administration, the whole thing? And now we know the answer. They did. This this wasn't organic from the school boards. This is the White House saying, get, send us a letter, put the specifics in there. And it seems to me the fix was in that that Merrick Garland did this because the White House wanted him to do it. Uh, and the White House had absolutely no problem, according to what the, your documents show, with labeling parents as potential domestic terrorists. Right. I mean, let's look at the, the NSBA letter cited interstate commerce is like, well, that's not just the magic bullet that you can drop in to have the federal government get involved in anything they want. We also reached out to all of the state school board associations that are members of NSBA asking, did you know about this? Did you have any input on this? They're all appalled. And at this point, over 20 of them have distanced themselves saying, you know, this is a local issue. We want local involvement. We want parent and citizen involvement. We've been clamoring for this for years. And so this blindsided the state chapters and blindsided the board members. And as you said, the fix is in. So it um, there's definitely further investigation is merited. And the White House was so cagey about any association with the school board letter or connection to it. Peter Ducey of Fox News pressed Jen Psaki on, look, th- this letter came, domestic terrorists and so on. And she just kept saying, well, I, you know, I. I don't speak for the school board association. Meanwhile, the White House had been coordinating with them from the very beginning on this letter. And Merrick Garland, the attorney general, gave it up yesterday and admitted um, the the association. Here's we've put together sort of a longer butted soundbite that sort of shows the progression in the story. Watch. The National School Boards Association wrote to the president to say that their teachers feel like some parents protesting recently could be the equivalent to a form of domestic terrorism. And then the attorney general put the FBI on the case. The National School Board Association is not a part of the U.S. government. The Department of Justice does now have the FBI on this. Uh, It's something that the School Boards Association is asking for. I don't speak on behalf of the National School Board Association. I speak on behalf of this government. The very first sentence, you said, in recent months, there's been a disturbing spike in harassment. 
intimidation, threats of violence. Yes. When did you first review the data showing this so-called disturbing uptick? So I read the letter, and we have been seeing over time threats. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't ask you. So you read the letter. That's, that's your source? Is there some study, some effort, some investigation someone did that said there's been a disturbing uptick, or you just take the words of the National School Board Association? When the National School Board Association, which represents thousands of school boards and school board members, says that there are these kind of threats, when we read in the newspapers reports of threats of violence, when that is in the context of threats of violence, the source all, for this, for, for the very first line in your in your mouth, time of the gentleman has expired. Was the school the board time association of the gentleman has letter? So that's it. There's been no independent investigation of any of this. This is basically the school board's word coordinated pregame with the White House and Merrick Garland doing what he's been told to do. Yeah. And America First Legal actually just sent a letter to the Department of Justice's Office of Inspector General asking them to look into this because they um, have insider information that between the White House as well as the Department of Justice, that there was concern that parental involvement was going to have political implications. And so looking at a very tight race in November in Virginia, as well as looking ahead to 2022, if you are trying to actively discourage parents from being involved in the political process, that is a damning indictment. And it is something that the American people deserve answers to. Mm -hmm. And Merrick Garland's come under fire, too, because it turns out his son-in-law is uh, the head of some big organization that's pushing CRT in schools, critical race theory in schools and has made something the, the organization something like 27 million bucks so the way it works is the son-in-law pushes this sort of agenda into the schools then the then merrick garland whose daughter is married to this guy sends a threatening you know issues a threatening statement saying parents who are objecting to this stuff in any way that we find threatening are going to have to deal with me and the fbi i'm not saying he actually did it for that reason it seems like he had more pressure from the white house on this than from his his son-in-law how do i know but at least it's the appearance of impropriety and it's grossly irresponsible yeah, I mean, it's small wonder that people have lost faith in our federal government when things like this happen. That was another tip that we received from somebody who was very concerned about the surveying and the data mining taking place in schools, really without parental knowledge or consent. Um, and so the fact that this is something that came out, it just, again, it raises so many questions about how these decisions were made, why they were made. And, you know, as you said, the fix is in. Mm -hmm. So can I ask you on a larger -ish, uh, scale about parents defending education? Because we've seen so many disturbing disturbing headlines lately. And I know that um, you guys have been involved in in um, pushing some some lawsuits that have been successful. One, um, you just filed a lawsuit against the Wellesley Public Schools. This is Wellesley Mass. Can you tell us about that one? Sure. We sued them on Tuesday because they have maintained a policy of having segre racially segregated affinity groups where they have allowed or not invited students to attend or not attend groups based on the color of their skin. I mean, this is in direct violation of Brown versus Board of Education. The fact that this is taking place in American schools in 2021 should appall and sicken everyone. I mean, this is not a political issue. This is like an American civil rights issue. Mm -hmm. And the school also has what a lot of parents in the district have started to call a snitch line. They have a biased speech policy where they encourage students and teachers to report on each other for biased speech. And so somewhat surprisingly, students out of, a, out of an abundance of caution self-censor because they don't want to be uh, they don't want to be dragged into a star chamber. They can be referred to the Wellesley police as well as punished by the, by the school. To, um, so they just they just don't talk about anything remotely controversial at all. This is so insane. So is it a federal court lawsuit or state court? Federal court. Yeah. DMAS. Okay. Uh, and, and it's based on free speech, right? Like they're not allowed to do the students have free speech rights on campus. They can say things that are offensive, shocking, but they're Correct. allowed by the Constitution. Yeah, it is, yeah, not up to the school to decide what is or is not OK. And then on the um, segregated affinity groups, we're saying that that's a violation both of Title VI of the Civil Rights Act as well as of the Equal Protection Clause. All right. Now there's this Fairfax County, that's Virginia lawsuit, um, or at least not a lawsuit, but a controversy where the public schools there are apparently asking kids as young as 10 if they had sex, if they identify as trans, if they've attempted suicide. I don't I don't know if you guys are involved in this, but yeah, you are. You are because you, you guys. That's how I know about it. You obtained the survey. So what on earth is happening in Fairfax County? Yeah, and these are the surveys that are taking place by companies like Panorama Education and others. Um, Merrick Garland's son-in-law. Yes, gathering all this information on our children. Parents don't know that these surveys are taking place. This is deeply, deeply intrusive uh, information, obviously, that's being gathered. And, you know, one concern that it, it raises is, aside from parents not knowing about it, is, 
who owns this information? Where is it going? And then just looking at statistics about leaks and uh, data breaches that take place. On average last year, um, there were two data breaches a day in schools or their vendors across the country. And so, you know, do we want these, this kind of information getting out onto the dark web or being used against us and our children in the future? Absolutely not. Data breaches of what? Like what information could they get? Personal information, social security information. Last year, the Broward County Schools, I think there was a ransom for several million dollars because they gained a bunch of uh, student information. Oh and like so there's not only the social security numbers, but information like this that's out there. I mean, how will that be used against our children in the future? I'm so glad that there are people like you out there, Nikki, doing. I'm telling you, Parents Defending Education is a great organization. Check them out. A lot of parents don't know where to go. Great first place to start. They they can help on, on a number of fronts. And I, I've known you guys from the beginning. So stay with it and thank you.